I well, first of all, how did how did you get to fingering a girl, right? So you're mm -hmm. you're an openly gay man or whatever. Was this like one of your friends, like one of your best friends or anything no, like that? No, it was like, I mean, everybody else knew that I was um, gay or that I liked it, boys, but she just was like, you're cute and da 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 da, whatever. And, um, and so the boys that you was doing this with, were these boys that presented as straight or were these, were these boys that were openly gay? Um, so what do you think would happen? Like, if you actually tried it and you like, just like loved it, like, See, that's the, that's what, the thing. Like, what if you're like what if your biology took over and you just like you got in there and you was just like oh my god and it just changed your whole outlook on life what would you do uh -huh. what's up youtube man it looks like things are heating up for summer 23 so stay tapped in now back to the content what's up youtube atlanta street interviews out here with another one so we got my man. Well, is, okay, what's the pronoun? Is is um? He, is she? Okay. Yeah. So so we got a, a lady out here today. How you doing today, Miss? I'm fine. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. A um, little bit of a cloudy day today here in Atlanta, yeah. but we actually needed that because it's been kind of hot. Um. So uh, are you homeless? Yes, I'm homeless. Okay. And so how um how old are you? I'm 28. 28. And so how long have you been homeless? Um, I've been homeless for since March. Okay. Hold on. One sec. Here. All right, so quick interruption. We had to relocate real quick, but okay. So um, long and short of it, you say you've been homeless for how long? Since March. Okay, since March. All right. So, you know, coming up on six months. So what was the happen six months ago that caused you to become homeless? Um, I was working a job at the airport, and it was kind of like some discrimination going on. So they had to invest investigate, and they had me off work for like two weeks, but they never really got back with me with a specific answer or like anything to improve. So I ended up not working there anymore, and then it just took me until now to like find a situation um, to better myself, you know, like get back on my feet and get all the necessary resources that I need. Yeah, I mean, it definitely gets tough when those finances run dry, you know. Mm -hmm. um, what were you doing at the airport? Um, I was a cabin cleaner. Okay, okay. What uh, discrimination do you feel like was going on? Um, I just feel like um, being a trans girl, it's like it's certain things that you can say and certain things that you can do around people to not offend them. But um, in the situation that I was having a conversation with myself and I guess my lead or my leader didn't like what I was saying or- What were you saying to yourself? Um, It was a post on Facebook about somebody being in love and I was just like, I got, like I, it kind of made me mad because I they always complaining about being in love with somebody, but then they don't give people a chance. And so I sit back and watch. Was this the person that you knew on Facebook? No, 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 no. Um, it was just one of my Facebook friends that um that I knew that I knew of um that was complaining about. I don't know them personally, but they just a Facebook fan. And so you friend. were you were ranting to yourself about mm -hmm. their post? Yeah. Okay. What were you saying? No, that's what I was saying. I was like, I I don't like that people complain about been wanting to be in love and not accepting people when they're not putting themselves out there. So, and she was just like, uh, I, I guess she felt like it was her time to just be like, well, you're not supposed to be, you're not supposed to be on your phone. You're not supposed to be doing this. Or I guess she just got tired of me complaining in general or not paying her attention or whatever. I don't know what the case may be, but she just got all upset and they had to investigate it because she was like making remarks and adding extra stuff on. And I was just like, I don't got time for it. I don't know if you don't like me personally. Hold but on one second, okay? Yeah, um, it was just, um, I got into it with one of my leads and she just was uncomfortable with me being on my phone. I guess she didn't like the side conversation that I was seeing. So um, she went and told one of our other superiors that I was having a side conversation after we finished the um, airplane. And she was like, you were just being kind of loud. And I was like, well, I wasn't even talking. So I guess she thought I was talking to her about ranting or yelling or something, but I don't know. It was just, it was just, it was like a setup. So I just had to let them know, like, I didn't like what had happened. And I didn't know if she was a discriminatory person. So I was like, can you please look into that? And they looked into it, but they never called, like, contact us back to come back to work. So I had to seek. Um, you say contact us back? Yeah, because they had to, both of us got laid off. Okay. They paid us, but they uh, they laid both of us off okay. until they figured well, it out. Well, how do you know if they, whether or not they contacted her, though? Um, um, after, like, writing statements and doing emails, they have to contact you back and let you know that, um, Either they found a resolution Well, or, right. That's what I'm saying. How do you know that she's not back at work or she didn't end up back at work? Oh, uh, because I had a second job that I was working there at Whataburger. Okay. So you didn't, you knew that she wasn't back at work. Yeah. Though. I didn't see her around. Though. Okay. Okay. Um, and so the second job, do you still have that job? The Whataburger No, no, no. Job? It was back in Dallas. 
Okay, so that, all this happened in Dallas? Yeah, that's why I say I've been homeless since March because I just that's when I came to Atlanta. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, did that happen in March? What happened in Dallas? Um, no, that happened like January, December. Okay, and then it took for March to you to have to, I guess, get to the point to where you didn't have any more money and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and so, what what made you decide to come here to Atlanta? Um, I used to live in Atlanta in 2020. And um, to finish my transition, like, I got my name changed. I got to um, get my Adam's apple shape, like, stuff like that. Just I came here for my transition and for my music also. Okay, so it's like your physical transition. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, um, all right, so do you have any kids? No, 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 no. no kids. Have, have you ever been married? No, never. No, married. okay. So let's just, let's start from the beginning. So, where are you from? I'm from Dallas, Texas. <laughs> you from that DFW? Yeah. Hey, man. Shout out that big Dallas, Texas, man. Yes, sir. Shout it out. Um, I heard a lot of good things about Dallas. It's actually one of the cities I've never been to. Um, so, I definitely got to check Dallas out. All right, and so growing up in Dallas, did you have both mom and dad in the household? Yes. Okay, were they married? Yes. Okay, um, and so do you have brothers and sisters? I have two younger brothers. Okay, and so you're the oldest? Mm-hmm. Okay, um, how, how many years older are you than the closest one to you? Um, two years. Okay, so, so y'all like kind of, y'all grew up kind of close then? Mm-hmm. Okay, um, and so growing up, uh, would you say that you had like a fairly normal childhood? Um, yeah. Yeah. Good I childhood. Was middle class. Mm -hmm. You say middle class, mm -hmm. just kind of regular. Did sports, activities, things like that. Yeah, track and field, soccer, um, baseball. Yeah. Stuff okay. Like that. And so, and so, did you like end up going to high school, things like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I went to high school. I went to two different high schools. I went to Summit High School and I went to um, Pathways, which was an acceleration school where everything was online. Okay, so you ended up going to school online. Mm -hmm. What was the reason for that? I didn't like regular school. Like it was, I like once I finished the course in my acceleration school, they'll put me in another class so I could just finish fast. So you could just kind of pace along yeah. the pace that you go. I get it. I get it. Um, and so you know, um, we find ourselves with a different pronoun, right? Than mm -hmm. what we were, you know, um, physically born as, mm -hmm. you know. And so when did we? When did first of all? When did this physical transition start? And then when did, the, all right, hold on real quick. All right, all right, quick interruption, quick interruption. Okay, so, um, so yeah, when did you start to transition physically? Um, I started 2019. Okay, it's so about four years ago? Yeah. And so up to that point, were you just living like as a gay man? No, um, I would say I was living as a post-op or pre-op transgender. Right, Meaning, okay. Like, I was like, physically, I looked like more feminine and more woman, but I didn't have any surgeries done and I didn't have my name changed until I came 2020. What surgeries have you had um, up to this point? Um, I still haven't had any surgeries done. I don't really want to do too much. The, um, the only thing I probably want to do is my Adam's apple, and then I didn't want to get breast implants because I didn't want to have like a um, heavy set CD. I just want like a, a B. So it might be like uh, a fat transplant to my chest area. Okay, okay. All right, and so, so that's what I'm saying. I was asking like, when did you start living as a woman? Um, what men age were you? Mentally, I feel like I've always lived like one because I didn't, the environments and the people I uh, hung around and the way that I carried myself, it wasn't normally as a typical gay man. And I would say that I didn't like dressing like a boy at all. Like it used to irritate me going into the boy section and finding clothes. But when I go to the girl section, it's just like, okay, I can find like an outfit like right as soon as I hit the, the racks or as soon as I- What age did you start shopping in the girl section? Um, I would say 19. 19? 18, 19, yeah. Okay, okay. So up through, high school basically mm -hmm. um you was living as a man but yeah. i guess a gay man yeah um did you were you ever living as a straight young man no okay so you never did that um i wouldn't say i lived as one. Well. i experimented but i didn't like it okay it's so meaning that you had sex with women he, i wouldn't say um <laughs> not penetration okay so what did you do with them like I mean, I've kissed on them, I've um, fingered them and stuff like that, but it was just, it was too much for me. So, it was too much? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? I couldn't, what was like, that experience like? I, it, it was, 
it was experience, but it was just like I was. Well, first of all, how did how did you get to fingering a girl, right? So you're mm -hmm. you're an openly gay man or whatever. Was this like one of your friends, like one of your best friends or anything no, like that? No, it was like I mean everybody else knew that I was um, gay or that I liked it boys, but she just was like you're cute and da 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 whatever. And you know I was at a young age and they was like, well, why what don't age we? were you? Um, I think I was like maybe maybe I probably was like 15 or 14 or something 14, like that. 14, 15, 13, I got you. 14. Okay. Um, yeah, they wanted to know if I um. I mean, people kept asking me, was like, why do you think girls you like girls? They kept telling me girls like me or whatever. And I was like, no, nah, I don't really too much think about girls. Like, I'm always around boys. If I'm not around a boy, then it means I'm by, my, I'm by myself. And if I'm around a boy, that means I like him or we talking or whatever the case may be. Um, but, yeah, she just was, she was I, I don't know. I just tried it because it was just like, why don't you just try it? Why don't you just see if you actually like females? You know what I'm saying? You can't say you don't like this if you don't right, do it. Right, right. And I tried it and it was just like... When me and her was together, it was like we was both feminine. And I was trying to see if, like, she understood that, like, I still like boys. Like, I like the boys that much. But I was giving her a Were shot. you already having sex with boys at that point? Yes. So what age did you start doing that? Um, At the same age. Okay, so around that 14, 15 age? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like 13, 14 mm -hmm. type? Okay, I get it. I get it. Um, And so the boys that you was doing this with, were these boys that presented as straight? Or were these, were these boys that were openly gay? Um, I, mm, that was like for me. <laughs> what? They was like for me. Like I don't get it. <laughs> um, they wasn't gay. They they liked me because of me being around them and because of my attraction. Okay, so but I mean, well, they never people, dated a boy before they dated me. Did they date boys afterwards? No, they went back to females. <laughs> what? Is that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, because some people in society are gonna say, well. You know, the fact that they slept with you, that makes them gay, right? No. Because no? they didn't consider me. I was that feminine to where they didn't, they overlooked my actual birth. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I dated them, like, when I'm around my friends, they call me girl. Like, they be like, girl, this girl, that girl, this, and this is like, around Well, me. I mean, I, listen, I'll say this, right? Mm -hmm. Um, You do have that feminine vibe, right? Mm -hmm. And so, I get it. But, you know, I mean, you're still, you know, you were still biologically a male at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they knew that they was having sex with the man and they, they did it. And so most guys who, you know, are straight and whatever, they're not going to necessarily do that. Um, unless, you know, unless you're not all the way straight. Right. Um, so, I mean, but that's just what some people say. It, it is what it is. The bottom line is that, so you started doing that. And so you never actually experienced penetration. Like, you penetrating a, a female. No, 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 no. <laughs> I couldn't, like, mentally bring it to myself. Like, I didn't get that aroused or physically attracted to stuff like that. Like, I would watch porn, all types of porn, heterosexual porn. Porn will mess you up. Bisexual porn, gay porn, just foreign porn. Like, all, I just watched all that stuff. But it never really did anything. Well, porn will definitely mess you up. and It'll definitely desensitize your whole sexual life or whatever. Um, but I'll say this. You just said that, you know, and you made a good point. You yeah. made a great point. You said, hey, you know, how do you know if you don't like something if you've never tried it? Well, why doesn't that logic apply with, you know, you, you know, trying some pussy? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, why I, know, does... I get that a lot, and it's like, I just don't. What um, do you think, like... Okay. Okay. So, what do you think would happen, like, if you actually tried it and you, like just like loved it like, See, that's, that's <laughs> what, the thing. like what if you're like what if your biology took over and you just like you got in there and you was just like oh my god and it just changed your whole outlook on life what would you do um i can't think like that though. <laughs> that's the thing you said what if biology took over what, um what if my biology already took over well right meaning that if if you like just have the best biggest orgasm you ever had in your life and you're just like sitting back afterwards like whoa your whole mind is blown what would you do like would you have cognitive dissonance and be like i didn't feel what i just felt or would you kind of like admit like wait a minute that was actually really good like i i, I don't i don't know like 
um, honestly, like after fingering her, I didn't even feel anything about like. I get it, her. but that's fingering, and that's know, a lot different. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I can't different. bring myself mentally to like do it. Like I don't get like I had girls dance on me. I've actually kissed like lesbians and studs in the mouth. You know what I'm saying? Very sexually. Um, you know what I'm saying? I've had like encounters. Like I can. It's not hard to like. You know what I'm saying? Get a female and be like, I like you. I want to fuck on her and rub on her and touch her. But it's just like it's not. So you say it's not hard. So as a you know, as a as a trans woman, um, you say that it's not difficult to get a woman to be like, kind of want to get like a little bit risky, freaky with you and all yeah, like that. Yeah, because I'm attractive. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying that the ladies they come regardless. Um. Yeah. Sometimes until I, like they come and then I tell them like I'm not you know interested or not looking for something like that. So do you like dress as like a guy most of the time? Or no, do no, you... no, 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 no. I dress like a female, like a full female, like bras, panties. And they um, still come after you? Hair and... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they they don't know that you're... They know, but into... like some females are interested. So like I'm definitely... Like, like like I said, I used to like... I have a lot of studs that be trying to peg me, meaning they want to fuck me. So it's like they like my femininity and it doesn't bother them by me actually being a male. So... Have you done that? No, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. Okay, I okay, haven't. okay. I mean, listen, it's it's interesting because, you know, if if we don't ask these questions, you know, yeah. we won't know. And people will just assume, you know, they'll just assume. So for people that don't have access to, you know, um, folks that live these alternative lifestyles, um, you know, it's just, it's just interesting, man. It's interesting. So, okay. So, um, you know, I want to tap in. So, have you ever had any mental health illness or anything like that? Any diagnosis or anything like that? Um, no, not really. Um, going through processing um, my transition and having to be on medication, you have to go through um, mental evaluation. So they have to check your mindset to see if you're mentally able or capable of dealing with more hormones than normal. So no. Okay. Come on, Hold on real quick. Well, this, this video is going to have more edits than a little bit, boy. I tell you what. All right. All right, so no official mental illness diagnosis. So I want to tap back into the reason why you say that you became homeless, which is because it sounds like that incident that occurred at your job. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, you know, I can imagine someone just kind of yelling at their phone or whatever and that coming off a little bit crazy, right? Yeah. Um, can you acknowledge that that may come off a little bit crazy looking? No, I, it came out crazy, but I was trying to explain to her, like, I wasn't the the message that I was trying to get out wasn't for her like I wasn't communicating with her about it and she just was like no 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 I don't care I don't care so I don't know if it was like something she had already planned or something she just was like I don't know she just well, I, 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 well, I, I, I'm not talkative to people so people be doing stuff just to make me talk to them so that's probably one of the reasons why she did it I don't know I don't want to look at it I look at it as a bad thing and as a good thing so I don't want to well and I get it right but maybe is there any part of you that looks at it like well maybe i shouldn't have been kind of ranting and raving at work mm -hmm. right i'm at work i shouldn't be on my phone anyway and then i start ranting out loud about a random facebook post that's kind of like not a great work environment you know what i'm saying yeah um do you acknowledge that yeah i do because I, I mean because i get it like you know everybody like, listen, I don't, I wasn't there, so I don't know if there's any level of discrimination that was there. Mm -hmm. But based on you telling me the story, it's like, I don't know if I could attribute that to discrimination. Yeah. It just sounds like you was a, you know, kind of a bad coworker that, you know, was, yeah, like, you know, you was kind of loud. Listen, not to be mean or nothing, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> you was kind of loud and, and, you know, that's kind of obnoxious. It's like, if, if I'm just working and you're working and then you just start just ranting out loud, like, girl... You should, what you mean? You got to put yourself out there, girl. That's crazy. Yeah. Was you like really loud with it? Or? No, 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 I wasn't that loud. It was just like, <laughs> um, that's the thing. Like we had just finished cleaning the airplane. She was going to take the trash out and I was on my phone and I was, they was like complaining about being in love with somebody and not giving them opportunities and not putting their stuff out there. And I was like, I don't even want to hear that because everybody know who I am. They like, they not being open with themselves and you know what I'm saying? See that I'm in a situation and I'm, I'm one of those people who want to be in love, but I don't put myself out. I don't put myself out there because I'm a trans girl and not a lot of other guys that I hear that are, uh, or I see talking about it is attracted to trans girls. But it's just like, it's like, I don't know. It, it, it kind of- Do you get a lot of that like where guys try to like holler at you on the low type stuff? I get a lot of guys that trying to holler at me, but they be bothered. 
Okay, so they be, they be wanting you to yes. do it to them. Okay, you're clearly a feminine type. Yes. Um, the guy I'm, that just walked by, is that your, like your boyfriend or whatever? Yes. Okay, okay. How long y'all been together? Um, We've been together for like two months. And so, y'all like, he's like open about it and everything else. Like he's not... He's about not, what? About like being with the trans and everything? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, we walk around with each other and when and I go... And like show affection and things like yeah. that? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um... And so, you know, I'm going to ask, right? Because some people, they definitely want me to ask this question. Um, you know, did anything, like, ever happen to you, like, when you was younger or anything like that? As far as what? As far as any type of, like, sexual assault or Ooh, no. anybody? Okay, so no type of molestation or anything like that? Uh-uh. I was pretty much of a, like, free-flowing kid. Like, I was able to be a kid when I was that, like, around that age. I mean, okay. granted, I used to babysit people or whatever the kids may be. Or, like, when it comes to, like, doing chores and stuff like that, you have to grow up. Right, right. Yeah. For the most just, part, no. Yeah. I was a kid. Okay, so no, nothing ever happened to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some people attribute um, these lifestyles to things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, on some interviews, you know, the people, yeah, they they definitely have had things happen. On some, they haven't. So it's really just a mixed bag, is what I'm starting to find out. You know. Yeah. All right, I get it. Um, so at this point, what are we doing to try to get ourselves out of this position of homelessness? Um. Well, right now I go to work at the um, at the airport as a janitorial in like two days. And I start school um, to finish my education, well, to finish um, like half a semester of high school because I didn't finish. Um, and then out of, after that, I'm going to college for a music therapy, or a music therapist is what it's called, for a music therapist. And then um, from there, it's just like hopefully you just go up from there and open a business to help mental ill kids. Get it. You just kind of go put one foot in front of the other and try to get it on up. Yeah. Um, what do your parents think about your lifestyle and your life and everything else? Um, they think it's kind of dangerous on one hand, but on the other hand, they don't, they like, that's you, you know what I'm saying? You're going to do it anyways, blah, blah, blah. Just let somebody know where you're at or let, you know what I'm saying? Let somebody know your surroundings. Do they know that you're homeless? Um, yeah. What are their thoughts on that? I'm grown. <laughs> um, have they offered to say, hey, come on back home and reset? Um, they have before, but I told them no. Why? Because I'm grown. I'm like almost 30 and I don't want to be living under my parents, stressing them out. And you know what I'm saying? Not doing, like if I don't find a job, I don't like to be out of work for too long. And I don't want to be a burden on them being in their household, eating up their foods, eating up, you know what I'm saying, eating up their bills and stuff like that. And it takes a month or two months for me to find a job, and then it's not a good enough job to even help out on the bills. And then I'm left complaining, then they left complaining, then we get into it about something that's so it's basically be. a cycle that you've been through already. Um, you not really. It's a one. cycle that I'm trying to avoid. Okay, I get it. All right, I get it. Um, my personal opinion is, you know, hey, it's always maybe a good decision to reset at home if there's no toxicity or anything like that it's a good idea to reset take six months stack up some money you know help out with whatever little bills you know pay for your own food whatever and then get on out of there you know um yeah. but you know teach their own i get it you're grown and you know sometimes people just don't want to be up under other adult spaces you know so yeah i get that all right well listen if anybody out there um wanted to reach out help or donate do you have a way they could do that? Do you have social media, cash app, anything like that? Um, my cash app is... Yeah, I'm trying to wait to cross the box. <laughs> my cash app is Lubu, that's L-U-U-B-U-U, -U -U, and my Instagram is queenstacks at underscore, that's Q-U-E-N-S-T-A-X-X -X underscore. Okay. All right, well, listen, we really appreciate you taking the time, answering all of our questions, and we definitely wish you nothing but the best out here, okay? Yes. Make sure you have a good one. You too, thank right. you. You're welcome.